GTA 6 has been announced, and it's caused a whole bunch of rumors to swirl around. We've got a list of stuff that's actually confirmed for the game, so let's dive in. Now, the game isn't coming out anytime soon. Rockstar Games is still working hard on it. But thanks to some leaks, we've got some inside info on what to expect. We're talking vehicles, game physics, and the main characters, Lucia and Jason. Plus, we've got details on the map, the huge open world, activities, and all the weapons you can play with. There's also a bunch of cool stuff going on with NPC AI, RPG elements, and some new gameplay features. People are pretty hyped about all this, and they're chatting up a storm about what GTA 6 is going to be like. Now let's check out the vehicles in the game. The GTA forums did a solid job gathering this info, so shout out to them. So we've got confirmed vehicles like the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and something that looks like a 90s Buick Skylark. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. There are a bunch of other cars too, without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a 2-016, present Chevy Malibu, a Chevy Sonic, and a 2018 to 2022 Honda Accord. Rockstar usually gives these cars funny names. Other rides include the Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, something that's like a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a 2-018, present Toyota or RAV4, with Lexus NX vibes and a Mercedes grille, the Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, a Vapid Speedo, H5 Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez Livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Sabre, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. And don't forget the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unknown Albany car that's based on a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, some Asian sedan, Ferrasi or Ferroci, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Fudo, a Benson, NF890, Buffalo with no sports bumper, and the Stanier and Landstalker. With all these vehicles, GTA 6 is going to be quite the ride. Now let's talk about some gameplay clips making the rounds on social media. They give us a sneak peek at missions and what Rockstar is up to. One clip shows Lucia, our main character, trying to rob a place called Hank's Waffles, a diner. In this early test, the non-player characters look kinda generic and are jokingly called dummies in the game. The NPCs react to Lucia's aggressive moves, and their animations show they're pretty freaked out, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. During the robbery, Lucia can aim her gun at a hostage, giving you the choice to rob or have a face-off. Taking a hostage adds some spice to the crime. Jason, the other protagonist, is there too, and you can interact with both characters during the heist. Jason pushes Lucia to hurry up and make a clean getaway, hinting at a Bonnie and Clyde-style partnership, which lines up with earlier leaks about the game's story. People are even saying that Lucia and Jason look like Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from the Place Beyond the Pines movie, but we're not sure if the game's story will follow a similar path. Lucia and Jason look like they're in their late 20s. You can switch between them in the game using the controller's D-pad. When the cops show up, Lucia can threaten another hostage, and it leads to a face-off with the police outside. The outdoor area looks like it's inspired by Northern Florida with all the greenery. While trying to escape, Lucia and Jason rack up two wanted stars. But instead of a shootout, they skillfully maneuver through parked cars and hijack a police cruiser. You can tell it's an early part of the game from the tutorial-like prompts, including one about the police getting smarter and remembering cars involved in crimes. The clip ends with Lucia driving off in the stolen police car, and Jason assures her they can shake the cops. But their getaway ends ends with an accidental crash at an old car wash. In the next mission, Jason and Lucia hit up a strip club called Jack of Hearts and run into Dre, who's chatting with another lady. Dre talks about his music dreams and hints at someone named Boopy. During this chat, we get messages from two new contacts, Billy and R.B. Shaw, through a WhatsApp parody. The early footage shows a minimap that looks like the one in GTA 5, with icons that probably stand for missions from characters labeled WM and YJ. As they head up to the VIP second floor, Dre has a run in with DJ Tip, who's upset about waiting for drinks. Dre steps in, but it's clear that Tip isn't the most popular guy. Dre moves on, and that's where the clip ends. Just remember, this is early development footage, and things might change as the game gets closer to release. Another leak spills the beans on more than 500 world events, encounters, and easter eggs you'll come across while playing. There's too much to cover, but I'll mention a few interesting ones. You'll find stuff like missing tourists, yard sales with new clothes, an event that's a bit like the insurance fraud thing in Saints Row, a voice in the storm drain that might remind you of Pennywise. 
a Bonnie and Clyde mystery that spans different places, and a workout challenge that suggests fitness activities are back. Players can also stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and even the possibility of playing some crazy golf. There's a hint that the basketball court might be back too. Events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and mansions with big cats offer a bunch of different experiences in the game world. Now, let's talk about the main locations in Grand Theft Auto 6. Ambrosia has Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades or Grass Rivers, Fairyland and Fairyland Forest offer different environments. The Keys region includes places like East Key, Low Key, and spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee has a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami come with places like gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn offers a variety of spots to explore, like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and trailer park. Red Hill has a forest, South Beach features a boardwalk, gym, hotel, ocean drive, and park. South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac, and Vice Beach covers Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. There are also other interesting places like an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World. According to info from the GTA forums, Grand Theft Auto 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times the size of GTA 5 ES, giving players a massive world to explore. The game seems to take cues from the successful approach in Red Dead Redemption 2. Promising a well-designed open world with intriguing mysteries. We've spotted some real-life Florida locations in GTA 6's development footage, like the Homestead Miami Speedway turned into the Port Gell Horn racetrack, and recognizable places such as Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Even the 1000 Museum, a high-rise condo in Miami, is in the game, showing Rockstar's attention to detail. A metro map that's a match for Miami's real one suggests a deep immersion in the game world. The lush landscapes and greenery might hint at a move into Georgia but that's just speculation until we get official word. Details like the Vice City Neighborhood Police Department resembling the Miami Beach Police Department show Rockstar's creativity and world design. As always, we're waiting for official announcements to see how all these elements come together in the final game. Until then, the mystery of Grand Theft Auto 6 keeps fans excited. There's a recent leak suggesting that Alexandra Cristina Ecovari could be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice from a demo reel seems to match up with Lucia's leaked dialogue. We've covered a ton of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, from gameplay details to new features. It's important to remember that the game might still be a couple of years away from release, so we'll have to be patient. Now, let's dig into some interesting findings from the leaked clips. We see Jason and his pals hanging out by an in-ground pool in a lower-income neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. It's all about brain downloading and poking fun at Jay Norris's demise, classic Grand Theft Auto humor. The leaked clips also give us a peek into early police AI testing, showing NPCs using cover better during gunfights. In one scene, Jason robs a diner worker with an assault rifle, and we see some dialogue options that look like they're from Red Dead Redemption 2, but they might just be placeholders. Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the franchise, and a scene in a thrift or antique shop hints at the option for robbery, maybe even a place to sell stolen items, which adds depth to the gameplay. There are animation tests for Lucia and Jason, doing stuff like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crashing physics, with a car driving over an overpass. Highway signs mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida on Interstate 97, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another scene, Jason stumbles upon a shipping container full of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips show changes to the inside of a vehicle, suggesting new vehicle designs or customization options for players. Throughout the clips, there are various interactions with NPCs in the open world, like characters taking selfies, which makes the game's world feel more immersive. Another mechanic borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability for characters to pick up and carry bodies, adding depth to the game. Gameplay. We also see other influences from Red Dead Redemption 2 in different aspects of the game. The weapon wheel system is similar to Red Dead Redemption 2 with limited weapons and items you can carry. Lucia has a loot bag that might be used for robberies or stealing stuff from different places. The inventory system lets players hang on to health kits and other items for temporary buffs, and Jason can pick up and drop weapons.
weapons from his inventory. In one scene, Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, and we see unique animations for characters reacting to getting shot. There's a mention of a jetpack that was previously leaked by Tom Henderson, and it's inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game includes parody logos for social media like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters have different hairstyles, and there are realistic details, like Lucia's bra showing under her shirt, which adds to the game's realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways, which changes things up in combat. We also see Jason doing some fancy rifle tricks in the air, and another character in a parking lot shoots at him while holding his pistol sideways. The clips mention animations like Overdose, which hints at unique actions or events in the game. There are hints of horses and horse riding mechanics, likely inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is packed with places to explore, like motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Small details like being able to get a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall experience. The game adds RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, which gives players a deeper gameplay experience. There are references to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals, promising fun cycling activities. The leaked clips talk about loads of weapons, from regular firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use tools like flashlights, binoculars, and lockpicks. Players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel as one option. There's even a pool party with live music for players to attend. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds hint at diverse and unique environments to explore. A cool addition is the ability to shoot while swimming, which adds a new twist to combat situations. With all these elements, Grand Theft Auto 6 promises to be an immersive and engaging gaming experience. Here's all the information we've managed to gather about Grand Theft Auto 6 so far. Dedicated fans have compiled a 60-page document that meticulously covers every new feature revealed in last year's leaks. These features have been officially confirmed by Rockstar Games, as they originate from the footage Rockstar themselves acknowledged as part of Grand Theft Auto 6. Keep in mind that the game is still in development, so some details might evolve. However, as of now, these are the features you can expect to find in the game. If you're interested in delving into the full document, you can find a link in the description. But bear in mind that it's quite an extensive read, so we'll break it down for you. Let's begin by discussing the game engine. Euphoria Physics has undergone adjustments, and improvements have been made to the ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA 5. Additionally, Grand Theft Auto 6 will incorporate lighting and skybox systems similar to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This means you can anticipate enhanced enhancements like volumetric clouds and better lighting, which mark a significant leap forward even compared to Red Dead 2. One notable detail from the leaks is the presence of heavy fog, a feature not prominently seen in GTA 5, except for snowy conditions. Advanced weather systems will play a more prominent role in GTA 6, adding depth and immersion to the game world. As for characters, we already have insights into several individuals set to appear in the game. While Jason and Lucia are the main protagonists, the leaks have revealed the existence of other characters. These include Dre, not to be confused with Dr. Dre, Sam, a friend of Dre, Kai Wyman, Zach R.B. Shaw, and several others like Vicky, Iris, Shanice, and YJ. It's quite astonishing that we even have details about their heights. Lucia stands at 5 feet 3 inches, while Jason measures 6 feet 1 inch tall. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. We've also got details on three different gangs set to make an appearance in Vice City. Sand for Sand, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the Far Right Militia. Moving on to tools and items, the list is quite extensive. You can expect to find an autodialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, a color tool, painkillers, a pool cue, trauma kits, a golf driver, various food and drink items, a golf putter, a USB drive, a golf iron, a crowbar, a golf wedge, a torch, a slim gym, a tracker jammer, a duffel bag for stashing your loot, cigarettes, and a backpack, again for storing your loot. When it comes to weaponry, the leaks confirm several options, a rocket launcher, an assault rifle, a baseball bat, a polymer pistol, a knife, a bolt-action sniper rifle, a Molotov cocktail, a spear gun, which is intriguing, a smoke grenade, a compact SMG, a flashbang, a micro SMG, a hunter sniper rifle, a heavy machine gun, an auto rifle, and a pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel system will be divided into three sections, weapons, equipment, and gear. This setup is reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2, where you had access to your weapons, items, and horse all in one interface. Notably, we've seen glimpses of the ability to hold different weapons in each hand, and there's an additional quick item inventory in the bottom left corner of your screen. In a video clip, we observed an NPC firing at Jason, and shortly after, 
we noticed that Jason's health was low. A tip appeared on the left side of the screen, indicating, you were injured, your health will regenerate slowly. Open your weapon wheel and use a recovery item to replenish your health faster. Unlike GTA 5, where your health regenerated only up to 50%, in GTA 6, it seems that you may regenerate to full health naturally, albeit at a sluggish pace. However, if you want to expedite your healing process, you can employ a medical item. We've got confirmation on seven open world activities that will be available in the game. Currently, these activities include dice, golf, fishing, and races. Additionally, there's a van shipment activity, and in one of the videos, you can spot the spawning location for a delivery van event. This location is near the industrial area of Port Gelhorn, and it's noteworthy that there's a warning poster about security cameras in this area, suggesting the need for caution while attempting to rob the van. Now, regarding robberies, if you've seen the leaks, you might remember the Hank's Waffles robbery, which was quite impressive. Jason and Lucia took on the challenge of robbing this massive diner. In another clip, when Jason was entering a store for a robbery, it became apparent that he possessed an ability allowing him to see through walls. The leaks also mention events related to searching vehicle trunks for something valuable, or perhaps finding nothing at all. Moving on, there's another event type called Deliveries mentioned, specific to Port Gelhorn. It's somewhat challenging to predict the exact nature of these events, but that's all the information we have for now. As for enterable buildings, Grand Theft Auto 6 is set to offer more opportunities for exploration. Confirmed locations you can enter include the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, the Jack of Hearts, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries. Now, let's discuss multiplayer. In the leaked files, we did come across one multiplayer clip, and in the bottom left corner of the screen, it displayed PL2 of 32, indicating that there were two players in the lobby out of a possible 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online. While it's mentioned as 32 slots, it's worth noting that the player count is actually capped at 30, with two additional spots reserved for spectators. While hopes may be for larger lobbies in GTA 6, at least during this testing phase, they were exploring the feasibility of 30 player lobbies. Let's delve into collectibles in the game. During a scene in one of the clubs with Lucia, we can observe a developer placing a cardboard box on the ground. Notably, these boxes appear to be lootable, with a circle icon indicating their interactability. The debug text on this box reads, collectibles underscore car underscore pass, suggesting that these boxes will contain car part collectibles. Furthermore, there's mention of Wyman car parts boxed generic used, which has sparked speculation that players may collect car parts specifically for a character named Wyman. It's inferred that both Jason and Wyman share an interest in classic cars. Moving on, we've got collectible hats. In a video featuring Jason in an apartment, a developer is seen interacting with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat in the debug text. This implies that one of the ambient activities in the game will involve gathering various articles of clothing, which adds an intriguing layer to gameplay. Now there's a comprehensive list of brands featured in the game, which I won't read out individually, as many may not be of significant importance to the storyline. Instead, I'll display them on your screen for your reference. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to take a closer look. Moreover, we have a list of confirmed animals in the game. As of now, the roster includes snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, boars, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. Keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list, and there's a good chance we'll encounter even more wildlife when the game officially launches. These are simply the animals we have information on at this point in time. In the ongoing exploration of the forthcoming Grand Theft Auto installment, a plethora of new gameplay mechanics has come to light. These enhancements promise to augment the player experience in a variety of ways, ushering in a fresh layer of dynamism and immersion within the game world. First and foremost, players can now maneuver while ensconced in cover. This feature introduces a newfound level of flexibility during engagements, allowing for more strategic positioning in combat scenarios. Additionally, the ability to assume a prone position, a feature conspicuously absent in previous iterations of the game, adds an exciting dimension to gameplay, affording players the capacity to lie flat on the ground, potentially enhancing stealth and tactical maneuvers. Furthermore, the inclusion of loot bags offers a means to store surplus items, expanding inventory management options. An interesting addition is the capability to both drop and retrieve weapons, 
affording players greater adaptability in response to evolving circumstances. During intense firefights, a novel underfire animation engages, wherein the player character instinctively shields their face from incoming projectiles, providing a more immersive combat experience. In the aftermath of enduring a severe blow, players are granted the opportunity to enact self-revival, potentially turning the tide of adversity. In aiming down sights, the option to seamlessly switch shoulders grants players a tactical advantage, facilitating improved positioning and target acquisition. Moreover, hand-to-hand -hand combat now includes the ability to execute grabs, diversifying the melee combat mechanics. A noteworthy addition to the game is the implementation of buddy communication, embodied in the buddy comms and buddy ping system. Although specific details remain undisclosed, it is plausible that these features will facilitate coordinated actions between the two main characters, Jason and Lucia. Vehicle combat has witnessed a transformation, as shooting from car windows now entails the complete egress of the player character from the window, enabling full 360-degree firing capabilities, thereby revolutionizing vehicular combat dynamics. The intriguing Eagle Eye system, seemingly exclusive to Jason, allows for a form of wall-penetrating vision, although its applicability to Lucia remains uncertain. Enhancements also extend to interactions with in-game elements. Players will find themselves endowed with a broader range of interactions, such as the capacity to carry bodies, engage in robberies, issue threats, and converse with non-playable characters NPCs, during heists. Moreover, the ability to collect additional items, including beer bottles and cans, enriches the gameplay experience. Shifting the focus to new gameplay systems, one particularly exciting addition is the concept of money laundering. During the Hank's Waffles robbery, an icon associated with the car wash property, a washing machine adorned with a dollar sign, has been identified as indicative of money laundering. This suggests that players may have the opportunity to purchase specific types of businesses with the intent of laundering illicit funds in the single-player mode. Moreover, the inclusion of fences introduces a layer of illegal commerce within the game. These fences serve as intermediaries for players to sell illegal items, providing a means to offload contraband and potentially profit from illicit endeavors. The the inclusion of hacking mechanics is confirmed to some extent in the game. Lucia is equipped with a set of intriguing tools, including a tracker jammer, immobilizer bypass, USB drive, and an auto dialer. As of now, it remains unconfirmed whether Jason will also have access to these items. Historical leaks from a few years ago hinted that Lucia would be the designated hacker, so the extent of hacking abilities for each character awaits further clarification. Among the event types within the game, two distinct categories emerge, pragmatic cool and chaotic and romantic cool. While specific details surrounding these events are not fully disclosed, they introduce intriguing possibilities for players to navigate. Furthermore, during robberies, players will have the capacity to issue commands to the other character involved. In a video clip from the leaks depicting a robbery, a tip notification suggests checking in with Jason or holding for more options. This implies that players can give their partner commands during a heist. Notably, prompts to instruct Jason to either surrender or follow indicate a degree of control over both characters simultaneously, simplifying coordination compared to relying solely on AI behavior. The witness system and police recognition within the game hold significant implications. During the Hank's Waffle robbery video, an interesting detail surfaces regarding the Wanted Level Stars interface which includes the term full description. This strongly suggests that witnesses within the game possess comprehensive knowledge about the player character. Consequently, law enforcement is expected to recognize the player once Lucia enters a police vehicle. Additionally, a transition is observed from no vehicle description to full vehicle description in response to Lucia's actions. This implies that even after losing a wanted level, if the police spot the player in the same vehicle, they will react accordingly, potentially leading to an arrest or hostile encounter. During the robbery sequence, Jason can be seen actively preventing customers marked with yellow icons above their heads from calling the authorities or fleeing the scene. Notably, an NPC within the diner exhibits a yellow icon above her head. Following Lucia's exit from the diner, the icon begins to flicker. Subsequently, as Lucia approaches a police car surrounded by law enforcement, the icon shifts to red. The female NPC then departs from the diner, making eye contact with Lucia before hastening away. These developments underscore the sophistication of NPC interactions, presenting a notable advancement in the game's artificial intelligence systems. The prospect of item sharing between the characters Jason and Lucia is on the horizon. A notable example emerges from a video clip where Jason pilfers items from containers, opting to retain some while distributing others. This cooperative element extends to the unlocking of doors and gates, exemplified in a video featuring Jason within the Sand for Sand area, which, if you recall, is the moniker of a gang in GTA 6. In this particular clip, Jason stealthily maneuvers past a red truck, revealing a door from an import garage building 
bearing the descriptor door panel locked in its debug text. In juxtaposition, a gate within the same clip indicates door unlocked, signifying the necessity of unlocking specific access points. Subsequently, we delve into an extensive catalog of new features, commencing with an upgraded AI system. In a visual excerpt, the enemy AI exhibits an inclination to open fire upon Lucia when she pivots to face them. This hints at AI entities possessing a heightened acumen for discerning opportune moments to engage in combat. Impressively, AI units adapt their elevation relative to surrounding obstacles, steering clear of potentially disadvantageous head-glitching tactics. Furthermore, a prudent alteration manifests as AI adversaries opting to lower their stance during weapon reloads, a judicious move compared to reloading while exposed in the open. Enhanced AI combat tactics are evident in their lateral strafing maneuvers during shootouts. Notably, NPC behavior has undergone substantial refinement. As discernible in the leaked materials, AI characters no longer traverse the game world in solitary isolation, but now frequently assemble into groups. This intriguing development is reminiscent of a feature previously observed in Red Dead Redemption 2, where NPCs often moved in cohesive units. An illustrative instance materializes in a video where Lucia, carrying a duffel bag, shares the sidewalk with three individuals attired as tourists, who engage in animated conversation while strolling past her. This signifies a notable departure from GTA V, where pedestrians predominantly ambulated in solitary fashion, contrasting with the forthcoming inclusion of group dynamics, perhaps even encompassing couples or social cliques, enhancing the very similitude of the game world. A notable addition to the gameplay dynamics is the option to voluntarily surrender to law enforcement during a robbery. The consequences of such an action remain shrouded in uncertainty, warranting further exploration upon the game's release. Furthermore, the mundane act of purchasing gumballs from vending machines emerges as a potentially restorative action. While it can be surmised that gumballs may offer a healing effect, Concrete details regarding their function remain pending confirmation. In a nod to realism, akin to GTA V, the forthcoming installment acknowledges the accumulation of dirt on your character's clothing, reflecting the wear and tear endured during your escapades. The hair and facial hair systems exhibit intriguing variability, with different versions of Jason observable in the leaks sporting varying hairstyles, including long hair, short hair, stubble, and clean-shaven looks. While not definitively confirmed, this strongly alludes to the introduction of a hair growth system akin to the one featured in Red Dead Redemption 2. Given the precedents established in the latter game, the likelihood of such a system in GTA 6 appears high. Expanding the repertoire of actions available to players, the ability to consume items directly from your inventory is showcased. When Jason visits a gas station, the inventory reveals options for wine, soda, and fruit consumption, implying that you can partake in these items at your convenience, akin to the mechanics present in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a novel event type named Cop Trap, the game incorporates scenarios where law enforcement sets up traps at multiple locations. While the precise details of these traps remain undisclosed, it is apparent that police will employ diverse tactics to ensnare players. An overhaul in the police system introduces the concept of time until cops dispatch. In this iteration, criminal activities do not instantly summon law enforcement. Instead, players are afforded a brief window to execute an escape before the police response commences. The inclusion of security cameras as a surveillance mechanism adds complexity to evading detection. Unlike the conventional implementation in GTA Online, these cameras employ a detection meter, reminiscent of mechanics seen in games like Payday 2 or Payday 3. Players must act swiftly to evade the camera's line of sight within a specified time frame, akin to a filling bar to avoid detection. This novel approach to security cameras introduces a fresh layer of challenge and strategy to evading law enforcement. Players will have the newfound ability to restrain non-player characters, NPCs. The primary method, as gleaned from the leaks, involves the use of zip ties. This restraint option becomes particularly pertinent during robbery scenarios, where players can employ zip ties to immobilize NPCs. A novel feature that comes to light is the capacity to loot vehicles. A fleeting glimpse in the Hank's Waffles video reveals a button prompt in the bottom right corner of the screen, labeled Examine SUV. This hints at the prospect of inspecting random cars and potentially engaging in vehicular theft. To make car theft more engaging, an advanced hijacking system is on the horizon. The existence of the immobilizer bypass device previously discussed suggests that pilfering high-end vehicles will pose a greater challenge. Additionally, an item known as the Slim Jim will facilitate unlocking older model cars. These mechanics collectively point to the notion that hijacking automobiles will become a more intricate endeavor, with the potential for car theft endeavors to end in failure. Furthermore, two intriguing event types emerge, namely carjacking, cat, and carjacking advanced AI. 
These events suggest that the vehicular hijacking process will incorporate nuanced elements, potentially involving the interference of an AI-controlled entity. GTA 6 promises to deliver an augmented vehicular experience through improved vehicle damage and handling. In a displayed video clip, as Lucia attempts to evade pursuing law enforcement, cars suffer more impactful damage. Notably, various parts of the vehicles, such as the front fender and hood, demonstrate more realistic deformation and fragmentation. The in-game interiors now feature functional GPS and waypoint systems on the dashboard, enhancing navigational convenience for players driving in the first-person perspective. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car via the passenger seat, offering flexibility in vehicle interaction. A hallmark of GTA 6 is its meticulous attention to detail. Players can encounter raccoons engaging in behavior, such as rummaging through trash cans and pilfering food bags. These instances are categorized as world events, denoted as raccoon climb out of garbage, raccoon rummage trash, and raccoon steal food bag. While numerous other subtle details enrich the game world, they are too numerous to enumerate here. Interested individuals can explore these intricacies further through the provided link. Expect a heightened level of auditory realism in GTA 6. Weapon sounds exhibit enhanced clarity and realism, with greater volume. The sounds of bodies impacting the ground will resonate with a more substantial thud, evoking a heightened sense of impact. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements with heightened realism, while items will produce varying auditory responses contingent on the surrounding context. In essence, sound design in GTA 6 aims to authentically replicate real-life auditory experiences. Fascinating developments. Several months ago, a colossal trove of leaked data unveiled a wealth of intriguing random events, world encounters, that promised to enrich the GTA 6 experience. While I won't delve into all of them, the list is nothing short of captivating. Events range from mundane occurrences like parking disputes to more enthralling incidents such as donut burnouts, protests, and even someone suffering a concussion. The prospect of navigating the lifelike world of Vice City, teeming with such diverse activities, is undeniably exhilarating. I strongly recommend pausing the video to peruse this remarkable compilation. Additionally, we have been privy to an extensive catalog of vehicles slated to appear in GTA 6. These vehicles, gleaned from both in-game leaks and files, I encourage you to peruse this comprehensive list at your leisure. It resides on page 30 of the document. Furthermore, the leaks have divulged a plethora of confirmed locations within Vice City and its environs. Naturally, Vice City itself takes center stage, while several districts and neighborhoods will pepper its landscape. Notable locations include Edgewater, North Bay City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Port Gellhorn, intriguingly, appears as a separate city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous iterations. The list extends to encompass Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ekin, Fanaka, Underwater, and Relief. Each of these major locations contains a multitude of sub-locations, a testament to the meticulous world-building evident in the game. There's been a lot of talk since GTA 6 was announced, with rumors flying all over. But hey, here's a rundown of confirmed stuff like vehicles, items, weapons, and features for the game. Now, the official release of the game is still a good few years away. Rockstar Games is really putting in the work to make this game top-notch. But thanks to a leak, we've got some inside info. We're talking cars, new physics, main characters like Lucia and Jason, map locations, a massive open world, tons of stuff to do in-game, and a bunch of weapons you'll get to use. We've also learned about better AI for non-player characters, some RPG elements, and cool new gameplay features. All this has got the gaming community buzzing about what GTA 6 will bring when it finally drops. Let's dive into the primary video clips, making rounds on social platforms, showcasing mission gameplay, and offering insights into Rockstar Games' vision for GTA 6. Among the widely shared footage is a mission featuring Lucia, the game's playable character, and a Latina protagonist attempting to rob Hank's Waffles, a diner. During this early test phase, the non-player characters lack distinct facial features and bear a dummy-like appearance, humorously dubbed in-game as such. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. The NPC's responses are influenced by Lucia's aggressive actions, with various animations depicting the fear evoked by the robbery, akin to the dynamic NPC reactions seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. In the diner heist, Lucia has the option to aim her handgun at a hostage, providing players the choice to either rob or engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Managing the hostage adds depth to criminal activities in the game. Jason, the white male protagonist, is also involved in the robbery, allowing players to interact with both characters during the encounter. Jason urges Lucia to act swiftly and escape without a trace, hinting at a relationship reminiscent of Bonnie and Clyde, 
aligning with previous leaks regarding the game's storyline. The character's appearance bears similarities to actors Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from The Place Beyond the Pines, though it remains uncertain if the narrative will mirror the movie's plot. Lucia and Jason appear to be in their late 20s, and the game incorporates a character-switching mechanism seamlessly activated through the controller's D-pad. As the police arrive, Lucia can menace another hostage, leading to a showdown with law enforcement outside. The intricate design of the outdoor area suggests a setting modeled after northern Florida, characterized by lush vegetation. As Lucia and Jason make their getaway, they rack up two wanted stars but avoid a shootout, deftly maneuvering around parked cars before commandeering a police cruiser. This early mission stage is apparent with tutorial-like cues, one highlighting improvements in police AI, where law enforcement remembers vehicles linked to illegal actions. The scene wraps up with Lucia driving the police car, Jason reassuring her of their ability to shake off the cops. However, their escape comes to an abrupt halt, with an unintended collision at an outdated car wash. The early footage reveals a minimap reminiscent of Grand Grand Theft Auto 5, with icons possibly denoting missions from unfamiliar characters labeled WM and YJ. As they ascend to the VIP second floor, Dre interacts with DJ Tip, who appears irked by drink delays. A brief spat implies Tip's unpopular status. Dre moves on, and the clip ends. It's important to note that these clips depict early development stages, subject to changes throughout the game's progress. Another intriguing leak spills details on over 500 in-game events, encounters, and Easter eggs. While we can't cover them all, here are a few highlights. Various events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and big cat mansions offer diverse experiences within the game's universe. There's talk of missing tourists, yard sales offering new clothes, an event resembling insurance fraud from Saints Row, a mysterious voice in a storm drain, potentially a nod to Pennywise, a multi-location Bonnie and Clyde mystery, and a workout challenge hinting at the return of fitness activities. Additionally, within Grand Theft Auto 6, players can stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and the prospect of crazy golf gameplay. Based on insights gathered from the GTA forums, GTA 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times larger than GTA 5, providing players with a vast and immersive environment to explore. The game draws inspiration from the successful approach seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising a meticulously crafted open world with captivating mysteries that elevate the gaming experience. GTA 6's development footage showcases recognizable real-life locations from Florida, such as the Homestead Miami Speedway, reimagined as the Port Gel Horn Racetrack, along with places like Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Moreover, the inclusion of the 1,000 Museum, a high-rise residential condominium in Miami, demonstrates Rockstar's dedication to detail. A metro map mirroring Miami's real version adds to the immersive nature of the game world. The presence of lush grasslands and vegetation hints at potential expansion into Georgia, although this aspect remains speculative until officially confirmed. The Miami Beach Police Department's resemblance to the Vice City Neighborhood Police Station shows how Rockstar brings creativity into their world designs. Of course, with any early info, we're waiting for official confirmations to see how how these elements fit into the final game. Until then, the mystery around Grand Theft Auto 6 will definitely keep fans excited for its release. Now, let's take a look at the primary locations featured in GTA 6. Ambrosia comprises Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades, or Grass Rivers, Fairyland, and Fairyland Forest offer distinct settings. The Keys region includes East Key, Low Key, and additional spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee encompasses a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami feature establishments such as gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn distinguishes itself with detailed spots like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and more. Red Hill showcases a forest, South Beach offers a boardwalk, gym, hotel, Ocean Drive, and Park, while South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac. Vice Beach encompasses Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. Miscellaneous locations such as an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World enrich the gaming world. Recent leaks from this week strongly suggest that Alexandra Christina Ekavari might be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice in a demo reel closely matches the leaked clips of Lucia's dialogues, hinting at her likely portrayal of the character. Throughout this breakdown, we've covered loads of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, diving into different aspects of the game. It was important to cover everything we 
know about the game so far, and while we're eagerly waiting for it, it might still be a couple of years before we get our hands on it. Let's kick off by highlighting some cool discoveries from the leaked clips, focusing on new features and gameplay details revealed. In one scene, Jason and his pals are chilling by an in-ground pool in a modest neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. Their banter brings in playful references to Jay Norris's demise, showcasing that classic Grand Theft Auto humor fans love. Lucia and Jason are shown in animation tests doing different actions like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crash physics on an overpass. The highway signs on Interstate 97 mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another interesting scene, Jason finds a shipping container filled with stacks of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips reveal tweaks being made to a vehicle's interior, hinting at potential new designs or customization options for players. Throughout the clips, interactions with NPCs in the open world are demonstrated, including characters taking selfies, which adds depth to the game's environment and immersion. There's a moment where Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, showcasing unique animations for characters reacting to being shot. A notable find in the clips is a jetpack, previously leaked by Tom Henderson, which is seen inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game features parody social media logos like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters also sport different hairstyles, with details like Lucia's visible bra under her shirt, adding realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways during combat, adding a different dimension to fights. Additionally, Jason is seen twirling his rifle in the air, while another character in a parking lot shoots at him with their pistol held sideways. The leaked clips also reveal early police AI testing, with NPCs showing better cover usage in shootouts. There's a scene where Jason holds up a diner worker with an assault rifle, and while there are dialogue options similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, they seem placeholder for now. Also, Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the series. There's a scene in a thrift or antique shop that allows for robbery, potentially serving as a spot to sell stolen items, adding depth to the gameplay. Another feature borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability to pick up and carry bodies, which adds complexity to gameplay. Red Dead Redemption 2's influence can be seen in several other aspects of this game too. The game brings in several RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, giving players a deeper gameplay experience. References to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals promise enjoyable cycling activities. The leaked clips mention a bunch of weapons, from firearms like pistols, shotguns and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use equipment such as flashlights, binoculars, lockpicks, and more. Additionally, players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel being one of the options. There's even a pool party with live music for players to check out. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds suggest diverse environments to explore. The weapon wheel system, similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, limits the number of weapons and items players can carry. Lucia can carry a loot bag, possibly used for robberies or stealing from different places. The inventory system allows players to carry health kits and other items for temporary boosts and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. The clips hint at animations like Overdose, suggesting unique actions or events in the game. There are indications of horses and horse riding mechanics, possibly inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is full of accessible places, including motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Little details like grabbing a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall vibe. A cool feature is the ability to shoot while swimming, adding a new layer to combat situations. All these diverse and interesting elements together promise an immersive and fun gaming experience in Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into the cars of GTA 6. Shout out to the GTA forums for putting together this info. You can find links below to join the discussions. There's a bunch of confirmed vehicles. We're talking the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and a car that looks like an early 90s Buick Skylark. Then there are some new cars without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a Chevy Malibu from 2016 onwards, a Chevy Sonic, and a Honda Accord from 2018 to 2022. And you know how Rockstar rolls, they'll give these cars their own funny names like they always do. There's more on the list too. Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a Toyota RAV4 from 2018 onwards, with a mix of Lexus NX style, and a Mercedes Grill, Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, Vapid Speedo, HV Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-50 
D-Class Turbo Saber, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. Moreover, gamers can anticipate a range of vehicles in Grand Theft Auto 6, including the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unidentified Albany vehicle drawing inspiration from a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, an unknown Asian sedan, a Ferrazzi or Ferrochi, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Feudo, a Benson NF890, Buffalo without a sports bumper, and the Steenier and Landstalker. From 2022 and onward, a group of passionate GTA fans have been diving deep into GTA 6 gameplay leaks, and what they discovered was wild. Their mission? They're trying to map out the entire landscape of GTA 6 before Rockstar Games even releases the official game. And guess what? They're actually making some serious headway. This is all about the ongoing GTA 6 mapping project. So how did this whole endeavor start anyway? It's an interesting story that not many folks are aware of. You see, there was a similar craze back when GTA 5 was announced. Back in 2011, a group of dedicated fans took it upon themselves to predict and sketch out the layout of GTA 5's terrain. How did they do this? By meticulously analyzing every single trailer that Rockstar Games dropped in the year leading up to the game's eventual release in 2013. The surprising part? When the game finally hit the shelves, a substantial chunk of what these fans had mapped out turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Sure, there were a few locations that were a bit inaccurate, like the military base being off and the dam placed in the wrong spot. Also, there were some variations in the overall shape of San Andreas, but considering they solely relied on Rockstar's official footage and had put in two years of work, their accuracy was pretty commendable. Now imagine this, if they could pull off that level of detail with just the trailers, think about what these enthusiasts could achieve with the leaked, under-the-radar stuff that slipped out prematurely. Plus, add in an extra year of combing through details and data. This mapping project is being led by a user called Dupzor, who is the project manager of this whole thing. On September 18th, 2022, when a massive leak dropped over 90 minutes of GTA 6 footage, the map enthusiasts went into full gear. While I can't exactly showcase the leaked content here, what really sparked the interest of the community were the coordinates embedded within the developer's HUD. These sneaky numbers revealed the exact whereabouts of the player concerning the game map. And let me tell you, GTA 6 fans wasted no time diving into this goldmine of information. With these coordinates in hand, the community went Sherlock Holmes mode, meticulously mapping out the game's terrain and identifying key locations. For instance, in one intriguing clip from the leaks, Lucia and Jason were caught in the act, robbing what seemed to be a Waffle House. This incident was marked by a simple white dot on their evolving map project. But it wasn't just a random dot, it was a significant clue. By cross-referencing the coordinates provided in this clip with other glimpses from the leaked footage, they managed to calculate the spatial relationships between different spots showcased in the leaks. This detective work allowed them to gauge distances and plot out the relative positioning of these places within the game world. However, it didn't stop there. The community didn't solely rely on leaked footage. They combined their detective skills with the official trailer, and using a blend of educated guesses and hard data, endeavored to include every conceivable road, building, and landmark featured in the GTA 6 map. The goal? To create a comprehensive and accurate representation of the game's virtual world based on all available tidbits of information. It's a fascinating process that demonstrates the dedication and passion of gaming communities in piecing together the puzzle of what to expect in GTA 6. Since the leaks hit, the GTA community has been on a mission, working tirelessly to piece together the game's map. Their focus has mainly been on sketching out the main areas, the cities, towns, and key landmarks. It's been quite a collective effort, with everyone trying to contribute and fill in the blanks based on whatever clues they could find. Then, the trailer dropped, and it was a whole new ball game. Among all the fast cars and flashy scenes, Rockstar slipped in a subtle surprise for the observant fans. After a few days of dissecting the trailer frame by frame, someone spotted it, a tiny image hidden in the bottom right corner of the ending screen. And guess what? It looked like a map snippet. Naturally, the community went into full detective mode. They put on their magnifying glasses and compared this mysterious map with the one they'd been building from the leaks. There were some similarities, especially with the layout of the right side and the presence of separate islands at the bottom, surrounded by water. But here's the catch. That image was pixelated to the max. It was like trying to figure out a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The lack of detail made it nearly impossible to confirm if it matched their map. This whole revelation sparked a heated debate among fans. 
Some folks started wondering if Rockstar deliberately threw this low-res map nugget to mess with their heads. Could it be that Rockstar is messing with the community, leading the GTA 6 mapping project into the wrong path? It's pretty odd for Rockstar to include this map, as it was deliberately placed. When it comes to safeguarding the details of their upcoming games, Rockstar is notoriously tight-lipped. So, when those leaks dropped in 2022, it really threw a spanner in the works for the company. It's kind of a deja vu situation, considering a similar thing happened back when GTA 5 was in the spotlight. I can't help but wonder if Rockstar did this deliberately, you know, as a deliberate move to shake things up and keep everyone guessing. But then again, we, the GTA fans, are pretty good at concocting theories out of thin air. Now, about that mysterious, highly detailed artwork nestled in the official wallpaper, that's what's really piqued my interest. It's like this odd piece that stands out from the rest, making me think it wasn't just randomly thrown in there. There's gotta be some intention behind it, right? The big question swirling around is whether it's a sly misdirection or a subtle clue for the savvy gamers. But honestly, we won't get any answers until the game hits the shelves. Or maybe, if we're lucky, after another sneak peek in a new trailer. The GTA 6 mapping community dove headfirst into dissecting this artwork. But truth be told, there wasn't much to work with. So, they've been sticking to the stuff they can actually confirm. Oh, and those maps floating around, especially the ones from IGN and PC Gamer? They're more like creative interpretations. Think of them as speculative mock-ups cooked up by the mapping community based on their hunches and educated guesses. There's a whole lot of imagination at play there, but none of it has received the official stamp of confirmation. The GTA 6 mapping project might not be dropping any bombshells about unknown locations in the game, especially considering how the gameplay leaks already spilled quite a bit on what's in store. Now the heart of this community effort lies in the finer details. They're all about pinning down the exact spots where these landmarks and locations are going to be placed within the game's vast world. However, let's be real here. They've barely scratched the surface, covering roughly just 10% of the entire map. Still, kudos to them for the tremendous effort and progress they've managed to make with what they have. What's confirmed, though, is that this map in GTA 6 is going to be an absolute beast, nearly double the size of the already sprawling map in GTA 5. They've made strides, particularly in fleshing out the Miami Beach region seen in the trailer, those gorgeous Venetian islands from the breathtaking aerial shot, and even narrowing down the location of Lucia's incarceration in the game. Looking ahead, this ongoing commitment over the coming years will gradually unveil more insights into what we can anticipate from the GTA 6 map. The anticipation is real, and it's fascinating to witness how this mapping endeavor will continue to shape our expectations for GTA 6. Looking at the timeline, it's pretty clear that both the completion of the project and the release of GTA 6 are still a considerable number of years down the road. But let me tell you, the dedication and hard work displayed by this community are nothing short of remarkable. Honestly, they deserve way more recognition for what they're doing. If you're keen on staying updated with the latest progress, or even lending a hand to this endeavor, I strongly recommend hopping onto the GTA 6 Mapping Community Discord. You'll find the link in the description below. These individuals have a monumental task ahead of them. But you know what? It's an incredibly intriguing project. Back in the days before GTA 5, I didn't even know something like this was happening behind the scenes. But now, as we patiently wait for 2025, Every snippet of information or rumor about GTA 6 gets me all excited. And out of everything related to the game, I find the mapping community's tireless efforts the most captivating and commendable. When we talk about the positive aspects of this partnership, it's essential to highlight the potential benefits that can emerge from Rockstar's newfound support for the modding community. One of the significant upsides is the acknowledgement of the brilliant and skilled developers behind the modding scene. For years, these developers have worked tirelessly to create unique and engaging experiences within the GTA universe. With Rockstar stepping into a collaborative space with CFX, there's an opportunity for a more symbiotic relationship. The infusion of official support could mean more resources, tools, and encouragement for modders to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible within the GTA ecosystem. This collaboration might lead to innovative gameplay features, improved server stability, and an overall better experience for both players and content creators. Moreover, the recognition from a gaming giant like Rockstar could open doors for these modders in the industry. It may pave the way for potential collaborations, official partnerships, or even job opportunities within the gaming development sphere. This, in turn, could elevate the modding community to a more prominent and respected position within the gaming landscape. However, it's crucial to approach these potential benefits with cautious optimism. While the partnership appears promising on the surface, 
The reality lies in how Rockstar manages the delicate balance between maintaining control over its intellectual property and allowing creative freedom for the modding community. The outcome will heavily depend on Rockstar's willingness to foster collaboration, rather than imposing strict regulations. As GTA 6 draws closer, the impact of this collaboration will become more apparent. Whether it becomes a model for future partnerships between game developers and modders, or encounters challenges that hinder its success remains to be seen. The dynamics between Rockstar and the modding community could shape the future landscape of custom servers, roleplay experiences, and the overall modding scene in the gaming world. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and analyze the evolving relationship between Rockstar and the modding community. On the positive side, there's a glimmer of hope that Rockstar's acknowledgement of mods enhancing the player experience could pave the way for more modding support in GTA 6. This shift in perspective might lead to a more collaborative environment where modders can contribute to the game's richness without fear of stringent restrictions. With Rockstar officially and financially supporting 5M, the CFX team gains more resources to elevate the GTA 6 server. This could mean a server even more impressive than the ones they currently run. The fact that 5M is now a Rockstar Games product suggests a vested interest in its success, promising additional funding and manpower to ensure its flourishing. An intriguing prospect emerges concerning the accessibility of custom servers. Currently limited to PC players, there's speculation that GTA 6 might integrate dedicated servers within the game itself, eliminating the need for external programs like 5M. If this unfolds, it opens the door for console players to join the custom server experience, broadening the player base and community. Moreover, Rockstar seems to be attuned to fan desires. Despite a larger audience watching RP compared to those actively playing it, Rockstar appears committed to making improvements. Their intent to let custom servers thrive suggests a more fan-centric approach, acknowledging and catering to the desires of the gaming community. However, there are potential pitfalls to consider. The most glaring concern is Rockstar's inclination to monetize these servers. While the specifics remain uncertain, it's almost certain that some form of monetization, be it through custom server shark cards or a pay-to-play system, will be implemented. This could introduce a paywall, affecting the accessibility and enjoyment of custom servers for certain players. As we navigate through this evolving landscape of Rockstar's partnership with 5M, the delicate balance between fostering creativity and implementing monetization strategies will determine the ultimate impact on the gaming community. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complexities of this collaboration and its implications for GTA 6 and the modding community. Let's unpack this a bit more. The whole monetization story got its moment in the spotlight during an earnings report where Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick spilled the beans. He essentially said, if folks are messing around with our intellectual property, why not make a buck or two? It's a straightforward business move, really. Taking a page from the unprecedented success of GTA Online, it seems like Rockstar caught a glimpse of how these free servers could turn into a money-making machine. Now the potential downside of this situation lies in the realm of competition. Rockstar's got its A-team working on the custom server's gig. That means anyone outside the Rockstar circle trying to whip up something akin to 5M is practically painting a target on themselves for a cease and desist. Let's face it, Rockstar might have eyed this strategic move with 5M from the get-go. However, with those servers gaining crazy popularity and the game becoming a sensation on Twitch and YouTube, shutting it down wouldn't have been the smart play. Instead, they pulled off a masterstroke, acquiring the team behind the biggest servers, effectively cornering the market and positioning themselves to profit from any potential imitators. Now, with GTA 6 on the horizon and servers in the works, Rockstar's sitting pretty. Some in the gaming community are even giving them a nod for finally throwing a bone to the community. But, and there's always a but, at the end of the day, Rockstar's the one making the rules. We'll all have to toe the line because, quite frankly, there won't be any other alternatives in the neighborhood. So, buckle up for Rockstar's GTA roleplay. It's going to be a wild ride. The landscape has already witnessed the repercussions, with servers and mods being handed the shutdown ticket for not playing by Rockstar's latest rulebook. The new mandates include a strict no to real-life vehicles, mission mods, and porting old Rockstar maps or assets rules that weren't in the playbook just a couple of years back. Now, while the financial backing from a mega corporation might seem like a savvy move on the surface, there's a lingering skepticism about whether it'll blossom into the fairy tale ending we've all been envisioning. It's a bit premature to slap a final verdict on the fate of 5M once GTA 6 hits the stage. Now, let's consider the potential repercussions for the vibrant RP community. While the partnership between Rockstar and 5M could bring about positive changes, 
There's an underlying worry within the RP enthusiasts. The fear is that with increased control and potential monetization, the organic and immersive RP experiences that players have come to love might face disruptions. RP communities thrive on creativity, flexibility, and a sense of autonomy. If Rockstar's influence leads to more rigid guidelines, it could alter the dynamic of these communities, potentially affecting the unique narratives and interactions that make RP servers so engaging. As we contemplate the potential impact, it's essential to look beyond the immediate horizon of GTA 6. The dynamics established through this collaboration could set a precedent for future interactions between gaming giants and modding communities across various games. Whether it becomes a model to be emulated or a cautionary tale will be closely watched by both players and industry stakeholders. The future of 5M and the broader modding community remains uncertain as GTA six inches closer to release. While concerns exist, there's also room for hope. The collaboration might lead to a harmonious blend of official support and community-driven creativity, enhancing the gaming experience for everyone involved. As players, content creators, and modders navigate this uncharted territory, the one constant is the love for the game and the shared hope for a positive evolution in the gaming landscape. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rockstar's track record with monetization doesn't exactly calm the nerves. Add to that the current scenario where they're laying down the law for the CFX team, dictating what's permissible and what's not. This conjures up a cloud of uncertainty regarding the future of both 5M servers and the broader modding community. Personally, I'm a big fan of RP servers and that immersive content. It's my cup of tea. The idea that the same company that set the stage with GTA 5 might potentially tarnish 5M, turning it into a monetized maze with no alternatives, that's a bit of a buzzkill. Yet here we are in the waiting room until GTA 6 steps into the limelight.